Good morning, Magic. I'm Gavin Verhey from Wizards of the Coast. And last week, I did a full Commander Legends booster box opening, plus some collector boosters to boot. But that's not even everything going on in Commander Legends. There's still these two, Reap the Tides and Arm for Battle, the two Commander Legends Commander decks. So I thought today I would open them both up, show you exactly what's inside, and tell a few stories about them to boot. I'm just gonna leave the camera rolling the whole time so you'll get everything I have to say. Let's do it. All right, I have the two commander decks here and we're gonna start with Arm for Battle. So here we go. Here's what the packaging looks like. We've got Wyleth nice and on the front. A Little bit of information about them on the back. It's interesting that we move to a new kind of packaging with these uh, commander decks, the Zendikar Rising and Commander Legends ones. Um, fun fact, actually I mentioned this in my last video too, but the Commander Legends ones were actually designed first, um, but because the set kept, kept getting pushed back, um, the Zendikar Rising ones released first, which is kind of funny. So you have to kind of think about them in like design order, in the other order, um, you know, le lessons learned and all that. But anyway, all right, so we're gonna crack these two open. I think we should go from the top, so let's uh, let's do that exactly. Here we go, crack open this top right here. Oh, there's a nice little flap you can pull up. Excellent. And there's some cardboard in here. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna open the top like this and kind of see what it looks like inside. I'm gonna pull out wireless like this, and the cardboard. <clears throat> okay, so now this packaging I'm just gonna set aside. Goodbye packaging. All right, here we go. So there's this cardboard right here. Has this, well, just from leaning it like that. Now, this is all, this cardboard is just all extra, this first piece. I'm going to set this aside. Right here is some of the other stuff that comes with it, though. So, I'm going to take this other piece and set it aside. We've got this wonderful deck box that'll fit everything, which is really, really fantastic. Goes in there. Great. Looks like this. Wyleth on the front. Planeswalker symbol on the back. Arm for battle, the name here. Really, really neat stuff. And uh, let's see what else we got. We got this great life tracker. So this is something that we pioneered um, <clears throat> first with the Brawl decks and have kept around. So I love this tracker because you just hold it in your hand. You can use the wheel. And of course, this one side goes from 20 to 1. And on this side, it goes from 40 to 21. So if you want to um, keep track of your commander life total, it's absolutely perfect for that. And you can do it all in one hand. You can manage it really easily. We started putting these um, at Wizards, actually, and we use them a bunch more than, than D20s when it came to keep keeping track of life total. So they're pretty cool. Definitely check this out. And then also we have the inserts. Da, da, da. So we used to give, you know, a ton of different rules and stuff on the insert um, and like everything you could possibly want to know about magic. Now we, you know, decide, hey, we can send you online for a lot of that stuff. Let's give you just like the core stuff that you need. So this insert right here is talking about Wyleth, a bit of flavor about them. And a nice little tip on playing the deck, which is really nice. So telling you about, you know, basically enhance your commander with or as an equipment. That's what this deck is about. It's a red-white or equipment deck, which is a lot of fun. It gives you a little hint on how to play. Talks about the fact that you can draft it. And then on the back here, it just talks about the very basics of commander. So here's the basics you need, you need to know. But, of course, there's a lot of other things you can find down here on the commander website. So, anyway, that's this inserty part that you'll find in the, uh, in the product. Now, of course... Let's get over to the thing that you probably are more interested in, which is the cards. So, Wyleth, of course, comes prepackaged like this. Here's Wyleth. Nice and shiny. Great art by Tyler Jacobson. And then we get... Set this aside over here. And then we get the Brick of Cards. Tokens on the back. And Condemn on the front. I don't know why Condemn is the card on the front. There is a, there is a group that chooses which cards show up in what order. Usually the rule is, and we'll see if it's true here, but usually the rule is that, a uh, fun little production fact for you, is that all of the, um, we call the stamped cards, the cards that have this hollow foil stamp down here, have to be together. Um, we'll see if that's true, and then let me open this, this up. Okay, let's take a look. First thing I'm just going to pull out these tokens from the back. So we've got, they're all double-sided tokens, which is pretty cool, first of all. So it looks like we've got three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten soldiers. I hope you like soldiers, a bunch here. And then on the back, we give you elephants, cats, a bunch of cats, and that's everything. 
So not a super token token heavy deck, but uh, still a bunch of cool tokens to go along with it. Normally our heuristic for uh, giving you tokens is, uh, you know, we, we want to give you the ones that the deck is going to use. There's probably a, like a generous gift in this deck, I think, which is what might provide this elephant token. But otherwise, cats and soldiers, pretty easy stuff. Um, I'm actually, you know, admittedly, I'm actually a little surprised that uh, there aren't two elephant tokens. Oh, I know why. Right, so usually the rule is um, if you can create more than one copy of a token, you want two, so you can show one tapped, one untapped at the very, very minimum. Of course, this deck has enough tokens to go around that there's lots of, lots of soldiers and lots of lots of cats. But because you can only ever make one thing off the generous gift, at least easily, um, that's why there's one elephant here. Okay, so that's all the tokens. Now we'll look at the rest of the cards. So, starting off with Condemn. Uh, nice little removal spell. In, uh, in Commander Legends. And I'll know, by the way, here that <clears throat> all of these Commander Legends deck cards, there's a couple of things you should know, know about them. Uh, they all have the Commander Legends expansion symbol because they're a part of the greater main set, which is worth noting. For example, there are some extended art versions of these cards that show up in the Collector Boosters. Um, the easy way to tell if a card is from the Commander decks is looking at this ex um, expansion number down here. With another Commander Legends card, there'll, it'll be out of something. For example, actually, I've got one right over here. Here's a card from Commander Legends. You'll see that it's 100 out of 361 down in down in the, in the number. These do not. They're, they're above the 361 number. This is 369. And uh, it shows that they're not out of anything. So if you just have a stack of cards lying around, that tells you um, whether they're in the commander deck or not. Just a, a little, a tiny little thing for collectors you can keep your eye on. So good removal spell to start off with. Uh, Condemn. This is an aura and equipment themed deck, so a lot of things are going to be impacting that. So we've got Dan of the Capuchin here, who of course is great with your auras and your equipment. A nice little reprint from Dominaria. Dawn Charm. So, you know, one thing that's always interesting when you're building these commander decks is trying to find effects that there aren't a ton of out there that, you, that are going to be really good for this um, for this product. Um, and uh, when it comes to Dawn Charm, like, there aren't a lot of white cards that counter spells that target you. So this is a, a pretty a pretty nice example. Uh, I'll note that, that uh, I see that there is, I'm, I'm just going to call it out because I'm sure you will see it at home too, uh, there's that wood is all in one line here. So that's kind of a unique thing about this Dawn Charm, a slight little misprint um, that might make this version more collectible than others. Yeah, this version is uh, is hard to... Uh, it's hard to find other cards that do exactly this kind of thing when you're building a white commander deck. So countering spell that targets you, not a ton like that. This does that. Also has a couple other cool modes, which is, which is fun. We've got Disenchant, a classic white staple here. And now we're going to start getting into some uh, enchantment. So this is an aura that enchants your creature. Because of course, one thing in Wyleth wants to go tall on auras, right? You want to put a lot of different um, auras and equipments on them, and uh, and just start start attacking and drawing a bunch of cards. Red, white, getting card advantage is huge. Um, so this is a removal spell that is also an aura. Very nice. Flicker Wisp, just total commander staple. Um, can reset some stuff too. For example, you can even flicker wisp your faith unbroken. If you flicker wisp an aura, when the aura comes back, you get to choose which creature it goes on, which is really, really nice in case you want to redistribute where your auras are. Here's the generous gift that makes that elephant token. So uh, once again, it's a nice white thing that hits any uh, anything, which is fantastic. Every commander game is going to have like some, a land or an enchantment or artifact you got to get rid of. Generous gift gets the job done. Ironclad Slayer gives you some stuff that dies back. Core Cartog Cartographer, that key white ramp. Uh, there's not a ton of it out there. You know, we're talking right now internally a lot of different ways about that we could uh, give white access to more mana acceleration. Uh, but for the time being, cards like this are one of the best ways to do it. And um, this can both wear auras and equipment great and also accelerates you, which is nice. A nice aura here that uh, gives you Flying Vigilance and Lifelink. Uh, uh, speaking of make sure that you, you know, can stay up on cards and that you have uh, enough enough lands or Esco so Explorer will get the job done. I should also note, by the way, these cards, uh, this, these decks, uh, I did not design these decks, uh, even though I did a lot on Commander Legends. I was the architect for them, so I worked with a designer with them. Um, but these decks were designed by Max McCall mostly, and I think maybe some tweaking by um, Corey Bowen, but Max McCall was the main designer on these. So thank you, Max, for uh, making these decks. And yeah, we worked a bunch together on getting them to be just just right. Um, yeah, he also designed the new cards as well. Uh, Return to Dust, classic, uh, classic removal card uh, for Commander from Time Spiral. Time Spiral had this whole cycle of um, being able to exile, or sorry, had this whole cycle of cards that if you played instants, that if you played them during your main phase, you got an extra bonus out of them. For example, Sulphurous Blast and Careful Consideration, you can go ahead and look those up. Uh, Return to Dust is 
probably the most widely played commander one where you get to exile two things if you cast it during a main phase, which is huge, right? It's, it's a two for one, and there's always artifacts and enchantments that need, need to go. Spirit Mantle, awesome aura. This is going to make sure your wild gets through. Swords the Plowshares, and not only is this a great reprint, of course, commander staple, but I'm really excited about the fact that we use the Judge promo artwork here. Um, that was a, a conscious decision we, we did, and uh, yeah, it's an amazing piece. Although I know some people on Reddit I was are seeing were calling this uh, Swords of the Golf Clubs, which I find very, very funny. It's a plowshare, of course. Um, but yeah, it's, I think this is the first time this art has ever appeared in non-foil, so it's a great way for players who love this art piece, especially for Legacy or otherwise, to get, get a crack at it. Unquestioned Authority, once again, great aura. Enchant your guy with it. Uh, make sure that it can't get blocked. Valor Stance, another way to protect your creatures. Often in these kinds of decks, once again, you want to like suit them up with a bunch of auras and equipment, but then a single removal spell will cause it all to start... Um, you know, going downhill. So Valorous Stance makes sure that you can keep two mana up, you can attack, they can't just blow your thing, your creature up easily, you'll be able to protect it, plus doubling as a removal spell. And, uh, yeah, I don't know if I've seen this piece of art before, it might, this might not be brand new for this deck, but it's a really great piece. Um, it's a really, really cool. Uh, a Braid, um, deals three damage to a creature, destroys an artifact, yeah, great, once again, multi-purpose card here. Expedite, late in the game, you know, when you have your auras and equipment uh, lying around, being able to play a creature, attach them with all the mana you have, and give it haste is pretty sweet, so that's nice. Fist of Flame, makes something bigger for every card you draw on this turn. With Wyleth, is fantastic. So often when you're building a commander deck, you want to find things that synergize with your commander. So you take Wyleth, you uh, attack, you draw, I don't know, three, four, five cards, and then you cast Fist of Flame and give it an additional plus, you know, four plus O, oh, plus five plus O, oh, and uh, trample as well to make sure that it hits through. So that's really nice. Although Wyleth tramples naturally. Speaking of things to grant your commander with a bunch of auras and equipment, uh, yeah, Team or Battle Rage will get the job done on that on that uh, end of things. Uh, there's an extended art version of this, too, in the Collector Boosters, which is really nice. But yeah, uh, giving your wild double strike is going to be great. Sweeper here. Every commander deck needs ways to deal with uh, a bunch of small creatures. Volcanic Fallout gets the job done, and your stuff will likely survive um, because it will have auras and equipment on it. Boros Charm, once again, deals some damage, makes stuff indestructible, gives a thing double strike. Kind of everything that this deck wants to do, so good on you, Boros. Um, especially, once again, that indestructible to all your stuff, survive, making your whole board survive a wrath, or even it protects all permanents, keep in mind. So um, if, you're, if they try and blow up your equipment, Boros Charm will say, nah, I'm good, stick around, and then double strike here at the end, really nice. Tiana Ship Caretaker, great reprint from Dominaria, helps out your aura and equipment, keeps them around. You want to make sure that every commander deck has uh, stuff that blows up artifacts and enchantments, pretty much, so Wear a Tear, another great card that does that. All right, now we're getting into some of the equipment. Excellent. Here's Bone Splitter, classic from Mirrodin. Uh, Boros Signet, of course, Accelerant. Once again, you want acceleration. There's not going a lot of it in white or red necessarily, so you should look to artifacts. Boros Signet does that well. Brass Squire lets you toss around your equipment for free, which is a great for skirting some big equip costs, which we'll get to in a little bit, I'm sure. And um, it also lets you do it at instant speed. So you can attack, see how they block, and then move stuff around. So. If it, your creature's going to die in combat, you could toss an equipment. If you have an unblocked creature, you could toss an equipment, so that's pretty cool, too. Explorer Scope, this can help you uh, help you ramp, potentially, which is nice. It's also just a, a cheap equipment. And when you're playing with Wyleth, you really want just cheap equipments you could toss on him. On him. You want a critical mass of those. So uh, Explorer Scope is fantastic for doing just that. Uh, Fire Shrieker, a uh, great equipment to put onto Wyleth for them. So that's really nice. That's some double strike. Uh, okay, so there's there's the one new card that, of course, Wyleth is the front-facing card. There are also two other new cards in each of these decks, so three new cards in total. And Timely Ward is one of them. Once again, just a great new uh, aura to make sure that your creature doesn't die, um, sticks around. It gives itself flash if it targets your commander. So you can attack with Wyleth, they might not block, uh, and then try and kill it, and you can flash in Timely Ward. Or maybe you play it pre-combat if you want to make sure you draw that card off of Wyleth. Whatever you want to do, this is great and very flexible. Here's Blazing Stun Steel, another nice equipment. Great to toss on with um, something like the Brass Squire for free. Plus one, plus one for each opponent you have, which will be three in a normal four-player commander game. And then, uh, yeah, whenever it takes damage, you get to deal a bunch of damage back out, which makes them not want to block your creature, which is really nice. Gotta have board sweepers, right? So here's Marshall Q, which is great because it not only swe sweeps the board, you're not going to cast this for, for less than, than five normally. So it's, it's mostly just going to sweep, sweep, uh, sweep the board, but it gives you some tokens and uh, then those can be equipped with your equipment. It lets you build an army right away. Audric can give a bunch of different abilities to your creatures. Great with Double Strike, for example, if you get that off of a Boros Signet or a Team or Battle Rage. Um, 
granting it to your to your whole team. Relic Seeker. So normally we have a rule when we build commander decks. We try not to put tutors in them that can get anything. So for example, Demonic Tutor or Diabolic Tutor are not cards that we put into our, our prefix commander decks. Just because if you're uh, coming into it, you're sitting down, you're grabbing them, um, and you can go get anything. You've never played the deck before. You don't know what you can go get, and you have to spend a bunch of time looking through your library to see what your options are. But when you can find specific subsets of things, that's when we allow it, if the subset is narrow enough or obvious enough. So Evolving Wild can go in because it's going to be pretty obvious what you're going to find there. With Relic Seeker finding an equipment, that's pretty easy to do. You can figure out what you're supposed to do. You can search through and find, you know, whatever, your eight, ten pieces of equipment that are in this deck, snag the one that you want, and this is a reasonable um, amount of cards to look through. So that's you know, there's kind of a, a dividing line there a little bit between what we allow when it comes to tutoring in these commander decks and what we don't. Um, because we want to make that gameplay experience, especially if they're out of the box, you've never played them before, you don't know what's in there. We want to make sure that that's really good. Cigar does aid. Great reprint. It helps out yours and equipment. Being cast as though the head flash is huge, and uh, perhaps even more, that free snapping on of equipment is gigantic. This is a key card for this deck. Glad we could reprint it here. Ceram, I designed this card, so this makes me very happy to be here. It, it stayed almost exactly this card all the way through, which is which is wonderful. I think maybe uh, the word equipment was actually added onto it, though, so it's a pretty fitting uh, that, it, that it goes here. I think mine was just uh, for auras and vehicles. Uh, maybe I had equipment. I'll have to go back and check the original file. Anyway, uh, great reprint of SRAM. And if you want to take this deck and then build your own you know, voltron style deck, SRAM is an amazing commander to do that will also draw you tons and tons of cards. Great way to, to make sure your stuff stays indestructible. It's not going to die. Once again, just protecting your creatures. Huge in commander. There's, that's where those cats come from, White Sun Zenith. Uh, this is really nice because at the end of your opponent's turn, you can cast this, untap, have an army in a can, and then equip it with, with your equipment that are lying around. Making sure that, sure that you can rebuild after board sweepers, super important. Winds of Wrath, a great reprint from all the way back in Wrath era. I think this was from Tempest, or at least one of the sets in that block. Um, yeah, destroys everything that is enchanted. So equipment, it will still blow those up, but uh, as long as you have auras on your creatures, they'll stick around, and this is very easy to be a Plague Wind or close to it for five mana. Comet Storm, uh, yeah, just deal a bunch of damage. Late game closer. Not much to say here other than... Uh, you know, get them. Dual Caster Mage. I love playing with this card. Absolutely fantastic. Great to leave up if you think your opponent might have a tricky spell. It also just counters counter spells, which is really cool because you can copy uh, the counter spell and send it right back at them. Uh, yeah, one of my favorite red tricky cards to play with. I always love putting this in red commander decks. If you have your commander in play, if you're going to have access to your legend, especially a cheap one like three mana for Wyleth, why not Giant play Jai's Immolating Inferno and uh, hit a bunch of things? Good to close out, right? Sometimes red decks have trouble closing. This will make sure you can close out well. Uh, speaking of closing out, Relentless Assault, which maybe has newer... I don't know if I've seen this one before. Maybe I haven't. I, normally, I would go and check if I were making a, a uh, fully edited video. But uh, here, I don't know. So maybe you've never seen it before either. Someone in the comments will post it, I bet. Uh, Relentless Assault is uh, a great way to make sure you, you, know, you attack again. So you, uh, you equip your guy up with a bunch of stuff. You attack. You draw a bunch of cards off Wyleth, phenomenal, and then you play Relentless Assault, you untap Wyleth, and uh, you get to do it all again. So you, you, this is actually could be a huge draw spell, deal a bunch of damage, really fantastic add for this, for this deck. Wild Ricochet, very nice. Another one of my favorite red tricky cards to play with. Being able to not only copy one of their spells, but also redirect it is huge. This one's always a blast. Word of Seizing. Split Second is a mechanic that I really enjoy. Um, I love it. I love that your opponent thinks they could have everything figured out and this card will totally mess them up because they can't respond to it. So you can even take their thing with a sacrifice ability or what have you. A lot of fun to be had, had with this card. Gets blockers out of the way too. Deflecting palm, uh, helps stop attackers that are attacking you, which is nice. If they try and block your Wyleth, well, how about you send all that damage of the blocked Wyleth right back at them? Master Warcraft, this is a couple great things. One, uh, it could just be a falter, right? You can cast it, make sure all other creatures get through, no one's blocking them, so that's really cool. Two, it can kill off a bunch of your opponent's creatures because you attack with a huge Wyleth. You send maybe all their creatures under Wyleth, which kills them all unless your other stuff through. Uh, but I think it's really also important to note that um, you can really muck with other people's turns. So on their turn, for example, you can take control of their combat step and then have them attack other players and totally you know, blow up their own creatures on their way into battle. So it's pretty easy to make this... Uh, you know, destroy all of target players' creatures or eh, or make them even attack with things they really don't want to attack with and might give them triggers that are bad for them. So this this is a, a really underplayed commander card, I think. And it's a really cool kind of tactical 
a uh, commander card. Yeah, I love this card from original Ravnica. Uh, this nice little split card here gives you another combat step, which, which we've already established is quite nice in this deck, given all the equipment, pumping up your stuff, the triggers from this equipment, plus Wyleth drawing you cards when you attack. So, uh, yeah, definitely great fit here. And then Black Blade Reforge. Yeah, here's here's something really nice to put onto your uh, put onto your your Wyleth. It's going to get really huge. It's, it's excellent with like the team or battle rage we saw earlier. And if, if you have another creature in play, well, the Brass Squire can toss it around. That equips seven cost a lot easier. Moving into the lands, we've got Secluded Step. Cycling land, it's always great to have options. Often in a, in a lot of my decks, I'll just play an extra land and make it a cycling land. And if I don't need it when I draw it, great, I'll cycle it. And if I do need it, well, then I'm very happy I have a land. Uh, Locks on Warhammer, great equipment, all the way from original Mirrodin. This card was a house in Mirrodin. It was an uncommon back then, if you can believe it. Uh, we did not get equipment quite, quite right the first time. <laughs> Um, ooh, this one's got Malira flavor text. I don't know if I've seen that before. That's kind of cool. A throwback to the original, um, or to New Phyrexia, rather. Malira, Silvok, Outcast, of course, is part of a combo deck in Modern and a few other places. Great reprint. Gives you some life. Sunforger. I mean, when I think red-white equipment, Sunforger is, like, the card I think of. I love this card. I've always loved this card. All the way since it was played when it came out in the Fungus Fires deck, for those of you who are played all the way back in original Ravnica, which is probably not a ton of you, but you know, post in chat or post in a in a comments if uh, if you remember the Fungus Fires deck. That was a deck that never really took off. It was the best deck for like a week, and then it realized that people wasn't actually that good. But uh, super fun card to go get any instant or instant with mana cost four or less out of your deck and cast it. If you have enough mana, you can you know pay three, then pay two, unattach it, then pay three, then pay two again, unta unattach it, and cast all kinds of spells like Swords of Plowshares, which we found earlier in here, um, the uh, Generous Gift, blowing up all kinds of stuff. It gives plus four, plus O to boot, which is really, really fun. Um, so yeah, this is a truly delightful card. I remember you would cast this with like, hit it Tsugu's second right was in that, that uh, Fungus Fires deck, which makes a player lose if they're at 10 life. Anyway, should, should stop reminiscing about a deck no one probably remembers. But uh, yeah, this card is one of my favorites. I know many Boros players love this card. So, Sword of Vengeance. Uh, this is a blast. Of course, modeled after um, a Chroma, giving a ton of different keywords. Um, and kind of being reminiscent of that. And yeah, this is super great on your creatures. We're going to while to give it some some uh, extra uh, evasion in form of trample plus first strike to make it difficult to block. Slayer Stronghold. Once, As I mentioned earlier, that haste is super important, right? So being able to give your, your creature haste, equip it, attack right away is really nice. And um, also just leaving this up on defense can make it really tricky for your opponents because uh, it gives the thing plus two plus so, which is n nothing, to, nothing to be fooled with um, to muck up a combat. You can target your uh, other player's creatures as well, right? So they'll attack another player. You Slayer Stronghold it. Causes all, all kinds of trouble uh, with dealing damage where they wouldn't have expected it to. Haunted Cloak, Trample, Haste. Like, once again, Haste, I just want to keep hitting. That's super important here on these equipment. Um, and the Vigilance, make sure it can block too, is nice. But the Trample and Haste is really big. Make sure your, your equipped creatures get through and can attack right away and you can rebuild. Hero's Blade snaps right onto Wyleth for free. So an amazing curve is turn through Hero's Blade, turn through Wyleth. And you can attack on turn four, draw a card at bit minimum for five. That's awesome. Hexproof. I and mean, Mask of Avacyn is a little clunky to get rolling, but the Hexproof is so huge to make sure they can't mess with your Wyleth or other creature, creature that it's on. Ring of Thune. I've seen all kinds of equipment here. We've got Ring of Thune and Ring of Valkus, which both um, uh, give it a bonus and give it a counter if it's that color. Wyleth is both colors. Sorry if I hit my camera here. It's kind of precarious. Um... While, of course, both colors, so it pumps them up. But yeah, giving giving them haste once again, especially, is, is huge. Soul Ring. I mean, it's Commander deck. You're going to have Soul Ring in here, right? Swift Foot Boots, of course. Swift Foot Boots to make sure Wyleth can, once again, attack right away and give Hexproof. This card is just a total Commander staple. Fantastic. Okay, getting into lands. We've got Boros Garrison. Boros Guild. Again, I'm going to go through this kind of fast, because you know what a lot of these do. This is a great way to blow up troubling lands like Maze of Ith, which could cause you trouble, so... That's just an important note of why it's in here. Another cycling land. Memorial to War. Also hits, once again, stuff like Maze of Ith, which could cause you all kinds of trouble. And your, your red-white, you know, getting spell slots out of your lands is nice. Some acceleration here. This is great for getting your creature through. Rogue's Passage. Rupture Spire. Stone, Stone Quarry. Sun Home. Termorphic Expanse. Transguild Promenade. Windscarred Crag. Some basics. Bup, 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 bup. And that's, that's that. Very, very... Very good. So that was a look at the um, at this first deck, the Wyleth deck, which is really, really nice. And it looks, you know, I'm actually just going back to something I said at the beginning. It looks like, yeah, all of the 
Almost all the rares, but not secluded step though. That's it's weird the secluded step wasn't. Otherwise, the rares I think were all in one place in this deck. Right? They're all in, in this chunk. Just to go back to how I said all the stamped cards would be together. Weird that that, uh, that secluded step was a little off though. Wonder wonder why that is. Huh. Who knows? Anyway, there's the look at this deck. So here's your Wildlet deck, right? So here's uh, Arm for Battle. Now let's take a look at Reap the Tides. Okay. So this is a green blue deck. Well, the other deck was Ores and Equipment. This deck is really all about what green blue does best, mana ramping and drawing cards. And AC does a fantastic job at uh, causing just that to happen. Um, I did talk a bunch in the last video about the design of AC. So if you, you know, have any questions about that, I, I could talk about how it compares to Tachiova and how we've learned, uh, learned some stuff here and, and you thought a lot about this um, going forward. So please I, go watch my previous video. I'll probably put it up as a, as a card or something maybe. Um, but Go watch my previous video if you want more information on that. So anyway, packaging, very similar. Right, you have this cardboard in here that's going to house the deck box, and the insert. I'm just going to crack it open just like this. Got this great little bend. It's great for opening up. I'm going to pull it out here. Pulls out nice and easy. Goodbye, packaging for Reap the Tides. I'll look at the deck here in a second. Put AC over here. And uh, we've got a nice blue deck box. So a different color scheme than Wyleth. Here's what they look like together, by the way. Probably more like this. They look like they're fighting each other. Rawr. Here is AC. All oh, deck box glory. Reap the tides. I love that uh, the serpent continues on the side. That's kind of cool, right? In the same way that I guess uh, the sword curves over on the on the Wyleth one, but the serpent is far more pronounced, which is really neat. Uh, this deck box will once again hold your deck. Uh, which. I would hope, hope, certainly hope it would. Uh, we've got this this guy right here, the life tracker, which goes all the way up to 40. Same deal, just blue. I'm a blue mage at heart, so I would uh, probably use this life tracker instead. Sorry. Uh, and uh, then here is what you'll find on this sheet. So, let's set this aside for a second. Here's what we'll find here. AC is deadly. That much is easy to see. It's colossal with a gaping maw, an unparalleled strength. Driven by territorial instinct, the tyrant of Gyre Strait is completely unfamiliar with mercy. Experienced seafarers know that only viable option is to figure out where AC is and to be somewhere else. How dramatic, sounds like a, a sci-fi movie waiting to happen. Anyway, talks a little bit about playing the deck. You wanna, you know, play extra lands and draw extra cards, makes a lot of sense. And then the other side is, I think just the same, but more blue. So, if, once again, if you like the color blue, not just like necessarily in magic, but just like the literal color blue, uh, this product is going to be the right color scheme for you. You know, our product design team, I really want to give a uh, hat off to um, or the people who literally design the packaging, like our packaging design team. They do an amazing job on the tiny details, right? Like, you wouldn't think that you needed to do another color schema for this, but the fact that you open a blue box and get blue stuff, and then this side of the insert is blue, I think that's just a really nice detail. And some of that attention to detail um, just goes a long way, makes the product feel extra special. So um, big thanks to our packaging design team and the people who worked hard on this. I don't know who the packaging designer was for it offhand, uh, but, but you know, Lisa Hansen, Marie Hall, um, Kevin Smith, if it was any one of those folks, um, those are some of the people that might have been off the top of my head. Uh, here is AC, so looking like this. Pow powerhouse card, super, super good commander and per 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 perfect for this deck. I know some of you are just going to ask to see it from the side, so I'm just going to show it to you from the side. Here's what it looks like. There you go. And I'm going to set that over here. And let's see. I am going to crack this open, and we'll see exactly what's in there. Run through the cards once again, one by one. Tell some stories along the way. So Arcane Denial. What? This is a, a super, not just classic magic card, but um, uh, definitely classic commander card, too. It's got artwork. Um, it's, I don't remember if this is new. It might be new for, for this product. Uh, but the one cool thing about this Arcane Denial, in addition to that, is there's an extended art version in the Collector Boosters. So if you're looking for a sweet version of that, you can go, you can go look there. Um, you know, normally in, in one on one magic, you're spending a card in this case, and you're going to give them two cards in return. Eh, it's a little iffy as to how good that's going to be. But in Commander, yeah, totally. Like it's, uh, you'll counter a spell that really needs, needs to get countered for two mana, and only one of it blue, which is pretty rare for a counter spell. And then you're not giving cards to everyone else, you're just giving it to one other player, and then you get to draw a card back. 
Uh, Ice Age had these uh, slow trips, is what we called them. Can trips uh, is, of course, the slang for drawing card right away. So slow trip is drawing card next upkeep. So don't forget to draw off your slow trip arcane denial. That's important. Compulsive Research, one of my favorite draw spells of all time. I played a ton of this in original Ravnica, and uh, yeah, it's a good draw spell here. It, well, you're going to find a lot of stuff that just draws cards in this deck. So Counterspell, gorgeous, a classic. Uh, Counterspell also um, has extended art in the Collector Boosters, which is really, really gorgeous. It looks fantastic. Factor Fiction, I love this artwork too with the, yep, I'm going to I'm gonna throw these, these three away, keep these two, really uh, showing what Factor Fiction does. And... Uh, yeah, that's really nice. Uh, Into the Royal. Nice little bounce spell. We've seen this a couple times now. It was, of course, just reprinted in Zendikar Rising. Um, also, Blink of an Eye. Pretty similar card <laughs> right there, besides uh, just the card name being different. Nice little nice little bounce spell. Sees a good amount of play. Always, always kind of like on the fringe. Like, oh, I could play this. I could not play this. Um, Ire Ruin Expedition. Gives you, you know... Play lands, draw cards. That's what this deck is all about. Mull Drifter, oh, card near and dear to my heart. Extended art version in the Collector Boosters. Makes me very, very happy. And I have I have cast this card and evoked it a lot. Also, yeah, speaking of this card, don't you know, don't discount the awesome ability to just cast it. I know a lot of folks go straight to evoking it, but 2-2 two -two Flyer, blocks, but it saves you some damage, gets in for some damage, hits a Planeswalker for some damage. Really nice, really nice card. Peel from Reality. Speaking of bouncing things, yeah, uh, I will evoke my Mull Drifter, and then I will peel from Reality it back to my hand with something else. Whew, that is phenomenal. Great stuff. Uh, Slin Voda, the Risen Deep. So when you, you're going to have a lot of mana, and when you kick this, it doesn't bounce your Merfolk, Krakens, Leviathans, Octopuses, and Serpents. Oh, and hey, your commander is a Serpent. That's awfully convenient. And there's some other stuff in here for Sea Monsters, which is, which is nice. Aesthetic Slime, you know, destroying artifacts and enchantments, once again, is very, very important. So, uh... This, this commander staples here. Beast Within, I, I think there's some humor in me uh, in in one of the decks having Beast Within, one of them having Generous Gift, right? Just color shift versions of each other. So it's just how important these um, destroy any permanent effects are uh, staples to commander. Cultivate, ramp spell. Cultivate, super strong commander. I don't need to tell you much more, more than that. Eternal Witness. Uh, but once again, commander staple. Brings the thing back from your graveyard. Fantastic. Explore, one of my favorite ramp cards that cast. I love that you, sometimes you don't even know if you're going to be able to ramp with it. You like cast it. You hope to draw a land. Um, super powerful ramp card. Harmonize, draw three cards. Harmonize is an example, by the way, of a card we don't make new versions of anymore. Of course, we'll reprint old ones for commander decks. The card already exists. But something that we're not giving green anymore is the ability to draw cards without controlling a creature to do so. Um, so we don't want to do stuff like this, um, just for color pie reasons. Green green gets a little too much, and we're looking at, you know, moving other stuff out of green as well, or, or curbing some things that we can do. There's some some stuff in the works. I can't can't say exactly what it is yet, but uh, stay tuned. Um, but yeah, Harmonize is one thing I can tell you. We're not not looking to give green these. If you keep the, if the creature's power, like Hunter's Insight or something, that's okay, but uh, Harmonize, not so much. Play lands, get lands. It's a good deal with Colony Heart Expedition. Kadama's Reach, the, uh, the other Cultivate, the Arcane Cultivate, um, yeah, these two are pretty important one-two punch. Get the, uh, full art, or rather extended art version in the Collector Boosters, which is really nice. Rampant Growth. Two mana, ramp you. I don't know what else, else to say. It's just a great commander card. Once again, destroy some artifacts and enchantments, the Reclamation Sage. Uh, this is, this is an interesting reprint. So, uh, Landfall Trigger, of course, good when you're playing so many lands all the time. Great way to really load up a creature and make it larger. Most of the time, I think when you're playing this card, you should choose the plus one, plus one counter mode. Um, I'm surprised you have a creature, of course, because it's going to be more relevant than the two life. But of course, if you're low on life late in the game, you can grab that life if you need it. Search for tomorrow, great suspend, mana ramp card. Also, the land just comes into play untapped, so it's sort of like virtually two mana if you have the three mana to cast it. So one of my favorites to play um, in my in my commander ramp decks. I think this card is, is uh, well, I'm not going to say underplayed because I'm sure if I looked on EDH, it would have a huge number of, of plays. But I think... So people don't always go to this when they're building a ramp deck, and it's just so good. Plus, you're opening hand. You just get to spend it. Ah, it's wonderful. Uh, Spore Mound. So some, here's something interesting with Spore Mound. Is the original version of Spore Mound did not have the word Landfall on it. But in this deck, because there are so many Landfall cards, and I think the same is true in the Zendikar Rising uh, commander deck as well, um, we added the Landfall word to it because it really aids understanding. These ability words are not mechanics. There's no gameplay relevance to them. They're kind of just flavor words there to help you out. And uh, if you're going to reprint it in a deck with a bunch of landfall cards, it's actively helpful to have the word landfall here. So um, that's that's why Spore Mound says landfall. 
and uh, even though it didn't originally. No gameplay relevance or significance to it, just, just helps ease, ease understanding, which is really nice. Wickerbow Elder. Um, once again, we greatly destroy artifacts and enchantments. Another commander, commander staple. You have a My Elder. Great reprint. Commander staple. Coil and Oracle. You can get the extended art version in the collector boosters. I'm really happy, really happy about that. Let's get another just blue green, blue green staple. Lots of lots of these cards are just like, yeah, if you're playing blue green, the reasonable chance you play this. Growth Spiral, another explore. Shark to Crab, rawr, get in there. It is, of course, a sea monster, so it does not get bounced by, say, the earlier Slin Voda. Um, and with all that extra mana, you're going to need stuff to do with it, and that adapt is, is good for, good there. Simic Charm, nice, nice multifunctional thing. Most of the time, we're going to choose the bottom two modes here, right? Giving all your stuff hexproof, protecting it, bouncing a creature, but. Flexibility is always nice in Commander. This card's got great flexibility in spades. Urban Evolution, the, the big explorer. This this card was called a science in playtesting, just science exclamation point. And it was one of the most fun cards to cast because you would just always say science. You'd hear that all around the playtesting rooms. It also was originally different. Uh, we had to nerf this card quite a bit. It was originally one green-blue to draw two cards and play two extra lands, which is, I mean, clearly that card was just outrageous. Um, we, we, we made it quite a bit weaker, but Urban Evolution is still strong enough to see play, which is nice. Uh, Trench Behemoth, one of the new uh, other two new cards in these commander decks. Um, does when We're making these new cards for these decks. We really want to make sure that they fill into the deck theme really well, right? That they do exactly what the, what the deck is looking for, um, that they help make sure that the that they play into like the commander as well. And so with Trench Behemoth, it gives you extra lands back to your hand, so if you're out of lands, you can still just, you know, do it multiple times even to play, like, two lands with AC and draw cards, and um, then it gives you landfall triggers for doing so. So it's, you know, kind of custom-made for this deck. It's a huge sea monster. It's a Kraken, so it gives you a lot a lot to work with. So that's what, what's going on with Trench Behemoth. Stump, Squall, Squat, Hydra, the other the other big uh, new card here. Um, it's just huge. I don't know what to tell you. Other than it's, it's gigantic. And uh, lets you put a bunch of counters over on AC out of nowhere. So that's kind of cool. Know that it's over any number of commanders. So um, you can put it on your opponent's commanders if you feel so inclined. As well as if you're playing with this with a partner in your in your deck, uh, you can play it on both of your different partner commanders. So that's kind of cool. Elder Deep Fiend. Great card in standard. Uh, super tricky card. Can come out of nowhere. It's an octopus, so it doesn't get bounced to Slim Voda. And uh, yeah, tap some stuff. Mucks up combat a little bit, which is nice. Maloku, oh, card after my heart. Love Maloku. This is a card I played a lot with, with it back in Kamigawa. And uh, the, the ability to return lands to your hand make tokens, once again, really good with AC, right? Because if you're out of lands to play and you want to draw some cards, well, hey, pick one up, play it by down with Maloku. It comes to play untapped. You draw a card. You can just tap that land and return it right back to your hand if you want and, and play another one for your turn. So, oh, delightful card. And also, I love Kamigawa, so it's a great reference back to that set. Love the artwork by Scott Fisher here. Just, just what a winner of a card on the whole. Nezahal Primal Tide. Yeah, this card is brutal. Um, hard to deal with. Draws you a ton of cards. This is the kind of uh, the kind of card that yeah, I'm sure you've seen before across a, across a commander table from you. It's really, really strong. Um, yeah, Dinosaur from Robles of Ixalan. Scourge of Fleets bounces a bunch of your opponent's stuff, which is nice. There, there's some non-basic hits in this deck, so it's not like simply you know counting up your blue sources, but even just bouncing all the small stuff is really nice because most of your sea monsters are huge. Shipbreaker Kraken, another sea monster, Monstrosity. Um, gets really big. You're going to have a lot of mana around, so it'll also tap and freeze your opponent's stuff. Sphinx of the Thune, Cast Factor Fiction, draws you a bunch of cards. Don't mind bouncing this one with the Slim Voda either. It's pretty nice. Stormtide Leviathan. This card can downright shut down the game, right? You cast this thing, and if they're just a bunch of ground creatures... Well, they can't attack. So th this is a card that really warps the game around it. We try not to make too many cards like this in our commander decks, but also we want to have like some stuff that will just help make the game end. And Stormtide Leviathan um, can be like, hey, I'm going to come down. So you can't attack with a bunch of your stuff, and I'll just crack it in with your Leviathan. It makes a threat right, right off, the, off the bat. does a lot of cool stuff. Um, yeah, I'm sure you, many of you have played against this card before too. Tromo Kratos. Um... I just love saying saying that name. Uh, Trump Crash looks a lot different from our other Krakens too. Uh, it's got got a, got a fun vibe to it, and uh, yeah, I don't know. You you attack. They have to block with everything. Are they going to put everything at risk? Maybe you got a Simic Charm in your hand hand to mess them up, um, and it's it's hard to deal with, which is really nice. 
in my last video, you know, I'm curious how many, how many folks are watching this way. We're like, what, about 40 something minutes in, 42 minutes in or so. Last time, in my last video, I put in a code word. Just because I was curious how many people actually watched at this point who were commenting. So uh, if you're at this point, last time was pineapple, which of course is a great fruit. Leave, um, leave the word kiwi somewhere in the, uh, in the comments. Curious. See, should it be kiwi? Yeah, I don't know. It could be coconut. Could be kiwi. Just kind of feeling coconut or kiwi today. I'll say kiwi, but if you want to say the word coconut too, if you're super cool, not going to stop you. Maybe, maybe, you know, you can decide which is your favorite. I don't know. I just know that I, I love eating them both. Whelming wave. Yeah, bounces everything but your krakens, leviathans, octopuses, and serpents. I'm really, yeah, I'm just really curious, like, how many people are watching these longer videos? Um, because I haven't really done a lot of longer form videos. I've mostly done, like, these shorter form things on, on my channel. So um, if people love the longer ones, maybe I'll, maybe I'll do, do more of them. Stuff like this. Let's see, let's see how this one turns out. Whelming Wave, yeah, bounces all the stuff except for your big sea monsters, which is cool. Avenger of Zendikar, fantastic reprint, green staple, you're playing lands. I mean, once again, this deck is you're, you're playing lands and drawing cards, which enables you to play more lands and draw more cards. So things that do things with your lands are just going to be awesome. Avenger fits that bill well. Malima, what a great throwback from an, an era, a long bygone era. Um, this card was, you know, quite quite the discussion when it came out, I think, in an Invasion originally. Um and, uh, you know, now, now it's maybe not quite the commander it, it was when the commander format began, but it's still quite, quite nice. And in this deck that's full of lands, it'll hit for a bunch. That trample is not to be understated, by the way. It's easy to come and crash in for, you know, 15 plus points of trampling damage with this. Rampaging Bailoths, of course, you're playing lands, you're making tokens. What's not to love here? This is great to let you play lands from your graveyard. I'm sure we'll get to lands in a second, but I'm sure there'll be plenty of stuff you can play out from your graveyard, evolving wild style stuff or what have you, myriad landscape. And so, uh, yeah, this this card is is rad for that. Uh, just gives you extra lands, plays with AC. You can play the extra lands for your turn from the graveyard with AC, so that's kind of cool. And it's just a great reprint as well. Terastodon, blow up. All of, all of your troubling enchantments or artifacts or uh, even lands like Maze of Ith if you need to. Yeah, another great commander staple. For instance, Avatar, sometimes with a deck like this, right, you spend your first several turns ramping, and if there is a quicker deck at the table, it leaves yourself open to a bunch of attacks. Well, this card can help you recoup that that uh, that damage that you took, and you've got big green creatures, so you'll be gaining tons of life off of it. Although you've got some smaller stuff, too, to, you know, if you need to, and Fathom Mage, will, especially with all your big creatures, kind of, for you know, the first little while, is just going to be whenever you play a creature, draw a card, which is really nice. Merc Fiend Leash, yeah. Eventide and uh, Shadowmore did these these lieges. I think maybe they were just an Eventide. I think they were just an Eventide. Anyway, um, the the two H H H H is internally our code for any hybrid mana symbol that uh, pumps creatures of each of its colors and then gives you a, a fun bonus. This is sort of like a, a Seedborn Muse style card. Um, it's always wonky to see a, an Eventide Shadowmore card show up because uh, they always just they look, look, look kind of funny. And uh, they got you know, the weird hybrid cost, but I love that block. I love Lorwyn block. I would love to do more there. Lorwyn, even Tide Shadow more. Someday, maybe. Simic Sky Swallower. I qualified. This is my one this is story. It's not relevant to this deck at all, but I'm just going to tell it anyway. I qualified for um, Nationals, U.S. Nationals one year, playing Simic Sky Swallower in my Tron deck. So back before you would slam seven mana for Karn, this was the big baddie. You would cast this and no one could touch you. Um, no one was playing ways to deal with Shroud. And yeah, you just you just slam that down and yeah, cast a wildfire or something. That's some good clean magic right there. Um, Shroud is interesting on this. I will note that though because uh, the original version just had it written out. Can't be targeted by spells or abilities. I'm pretty sure. And uh, so once we keyworded it, we added that added that in on this card. Spitting image, another wonky even tide card. Retrace mechanic lets you just copy stuff over and over. At some point, you're gonna have enough more lands than what you know what to do with. So putting them into your bin. Um, that you can then, you know, create a copy of your favorite cards is, is really, really nice. Um, and worth noting that, uh, you know, with Carlic Ramonaut Excavator, you, know, you want lands in your graveyard anyway. Seer so Sundial, literally what the deck is doing, playing lands and drawing you cards. Uh, no, w uh, noteworthy with this card is you can tap the land you just played to activate it. So sometimes as you're doing your Seer so Sundial math, keep that in mind. If you, only, if you have one untapped land, well, you can play a land and tap it and the land you had to draw a card. Meteor Golem, once again, just an answer to anything. Simic Signet. This deck has plenty of acceleration already, but uh, Signets is, are good two mana accelerants as well. Solvering, of course, once again, it's Commander, you're going to find Solvering. So Foot Boots, 
Super great commander card to have around. It was in the other deck as well. Let's your commander attack. Now we're going to get into the lands. Talk about a good one to replay with that. Ram Nap Excavator. Blighted Woodland. Ramps you twice and is a land. Just It's such such you know bonus value, right? You just put this in your deck. Probably doesn't slow you down at all unless you're missing green or blue mana, uh, which is unlikely. And then uh, accelerates you twice. Gives you two AC triggers. It's huge. Command Tower, of course, it's a staple. Coral Atoll, right? So these lands, modeled after Karoo, which is the white the white version of these, um, pick up a land, put it back into your hand, and uh, this is these are actually the cards you might not know. This is what the Ravnica Bounce lands are modeled off, the, off of. So if you've ever played with the Mere Aqueduct or um, Cement Growth Chamber, which is probably in here, we'll probably get to it in a second, they were uh, modeled after these, and in design, they're actually called the Karoos in, uh, in playtesting. Um, that, that name kind of stuck around for some folks. I use Bounce Land because more people know what that means, but uh, that's what they're modeled after. These are important to note. A big distinction between these and the Ravnica ones is you have to bounce an untapped land, so they're a little bit weaker in that regard. But these, these can go into monocolor decks a lot easier, along with the new Guildless Commons. And, uh, yeah, th these, are, these are always fun cards to go and see. And, yeah, this is the the, uh, the old old style of these guys. Let's see if the green one's in here, too. Let's go on a journey and find out. Evolving Wilds, yep, excellent. There it is, Jungle Basin. The green, the green version of the Karoo lands um, from, uh, I think these were from Mirage originally. Some set in the block. I think it was, I think it was just Mirage. It, the art looks Mirage. It was probably Mirage. Memorial to Genius. I designed the Memorial Cycle. Fun fact about these cards. I designed the Memorial Cycle in Dominaria. I, um, I was traveling to Africa, and I got off the plane in Africa, and I started sightseeing and seeing all these old memorials. And I was working on Dominaria at the time. And so from Africa, I sent in a cycle of memorials. Um... That we're like, oh, hey, we're going back to this world we haven't seen in a long time. There's all these awesome monuments. Let's make a cycle of lands that are like these. So that's where um, that's where the idea from the morals came from. And I designed most of them. I think some of the effects might have changed around. The red one, I think, did something different, didn't blow up a land. But uh, these are mostly my designs. Reliquary Tower, yep. Of course, you're drawing a bunch of cards. You're going to want this. Cement Growth Chamber, the the updated Bounce Land version from Ravnica of the of this style of land. Uh, Simic Guildgate, yes. Fixes your mana, Terrific Expanse, yes. Thornwood Falls, Vivid Creek, Vivid Grove. Um, something some interesting fact about these lands is we try not to make lands that get put counters on them because they're very unwieldy in gameplay, right? You're constantly like trying to fiddle with your counters as you're tapping or untapping them. Also, just from a design perspective, doing the five Vivid Lands did not make a lot of sense. Like it really led, it just totally led to the, this five color deck that existed at the time. And why did you need five lands that were, you know, you had two charge counters on each of them that you might not even use? Um, one for each color. You could have done with just one land to do that. So anyway, these, I think, were not well-designed cards, but of course, they're commander staples, and um, I'm not saying we should take them out of magic or anything, but uh, yeah, these, we could have done a bit better on the original design for these, in my opinion. Woodland Stream, another dual land. Got a bunch of forests. This is a great art piece. I think this art piece, by the way, is from the, um, it's really cool that we're using these. These are from the, um, uh, the Global Series, if I remember correctly. I, I might be misremembering, but I think that's what these are from. Just really, really cool pieces. Maybe, maybe at least this one. I'd have to go and look. I could also be wrong. Um, fun fact about doing these these videos where I just record it, record it and don't don't um, take anything out is uh, you get to learn along with me. Yeah, this really looks like the ones we did from the Global Series, though, which there aren't a lot of out there. So it's really cool, by the way, that we got to use the Global Series lands from the Green Blue deck here. Gorgeous, gorgeous pieces too. Love these lands. Oh, Elena Danner has a land in here as well. I uh, love a lot of Elena's recent work, or just all of it, really, not just her recent work. Then we get to the tokens, Let's see what we got. We got a beast for that beast within. Bunch of beasts. We got some illusions, some one one nice illusion tokens. Copy, this is a new thing that we started doing, are these copy tokens, which I'm so glad that we're doing um, because it just represents, you know, um, whatever uh, whatever you need it to on the board. Whenever you use a, a, uh, any kind of clone token making effect or whatever, these are great. Then on their back sides, we've got so cute little sapperling. Love a cute little sapperling. We've got plants. We got beasts, and we got elephants. Notice these are three, three beasts. That's the difference, right? So we gave you two different kinds of beasts. This might, this might be a new art piece. I'm not sure, but anyway, two different kind of beasts: three, three beast and uh, three, three elephant. We had to we had to get some new art. Now that we changed to the um, new token frame, right, with the with the core set, we still had to start commissioning some new art pieces because the previous ones didn't necessarily fit in here. Some of them did, some of them didn't. So I think this might be one of those. I'll have to go back and look. But that's a look through both of these decks. This is an unboxing of the two Commander decks, and I really hope you enjoyed it. If you enjoyed these kind of long-form videos, please let me know in the comments, and I can do more of them. Someone suggested, like, maybe I crack open Battle Bond or Mystery Booster and do a similar thing with that and tell a bunch of stories from the design of it. So let me know what you think. If you'd like to see more things like this, if you just want it with booster boxes, if you like these kind of deck unboxings, too, where I tell some design uh, stories, let me know. And I hope, hope you enjoyed this, and... Uh, 
I will be talking again with you again on Friday. In the meantime, though, may you have a lot of fun playing with some fun pre-constructed decks. You got this. One other thing to consider is how your commander impacts your mana curve. Normally, the idea of a mana curve is you want enough things at each mana cost that you will find something to play on those turns. But keep in mind that because of your commander, you will always have it available to play on that turn. For example, if I have a two mana cost commander, well, on turn two every game, that commander can just come down. In addition,